Hi everybody and welcome back to the Creative Kindergarten YouTube channel. Today I wanted to talk to you all about how you can use digital number talks with your kindergarten students. So whether you are teaching virtually or in person, these digital number talks are just like a fantastic way to build on math skills in your classroom. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip you around so that you can see my screen while I'm kind of talking through things so that you can actually see what I'm doing. But if you want to know, this is going to be more about like the technical aspect of doing a number talks digitally with your students. But if you want to know more about how to like actually do a number talk in your kindergarten classroom, I have a whole video just dedicated to talking about how I run um, number talks with my students. If you want to see that, I will link it down below or in like my pop up up here somewhere letting you know that you can um, just click on over to go watch that one after this one but I wanted to just do one about like the technical aspect of, you know, doing a number talk with your students. So I'm gonna flip you around now. Right now on the screen, I have a Jamboard uh, math talk slide set up. These are all pre-made with like real pictures. And then I also have one with uh, math manipulatives as well. If that's something you're interested in having that it is pre-made, I will put a link in the description for you so that you can just go ahead and grab that. If not, you can create your own, you know, Jamboard or Google Slides resource. I'm starting off with Jamboard right now. This is all in the background. So I am clicking on like where the butterfly picture is and on the words, I've created this background in Canva and put it as the background that is set for this set of slides so that students can't like touch and move things that I don't want them to. So what you can do is if you are in person, you can have this image projected on, you know, your projector screen in your classroom or on your TV, whatever it is that you have in your classroom. If you are a virtual and you are in a Google Meet, you can project or Zoom, whatever it is that you're using, you can project this so that students can see it. You can go one of two ways. You can have this as something that students can, you know, manipulate themselves and you can give them editing, editing access to it by sharing it with them and giving them, you know, um, change to anyone with the link and then changing it over here to editor. And then that way they can add their own like um, thinking, math thinking to the Jamboard themselves. Or once you call on students to share their math thinking, you can add it yourself. So with Jamboard, that's why I picked Jamboard first because it's so easy. If you are doing it or the students are doing it, either way, it's really easy to just add a sticky note. And then let's say little, um, Jace said that I see three butterflies, um, one plus one plus, whoa, what did I type here? I see three butterflies, one plus one plus one equals three. And then you save that on there. You can see that you can have um, all the different math thinking for the different kids can be on different sticky notes. I would even put that which kid is the one that said, you know, um, that Jace is the one that said it. So just like really easily be able to show the math thinking of the different students in your classroom just by adding sticky notes. What you can also do if you have one that maybe has a little bit more, you know, um, uh, like numbers behind it. Let's say it's this one. You can also use the pen tool to, you know, circle that they saw these three plus these three made six. And then you can add the sticky note that said three plus three equals six leaves by uh, Matilda. I don't know. I'm making up kids' names now. Matilda said that three plus three equals six leaves. And now you've circled it to actually show the math thinking. So that's what I really like about Jamboard is that you're able to like um, color in on the picture. You're able to add sticky notes to really showcase what the students are thinking. And you're able to write it down as well so that other students are able to think of, uh, to, to see the same thing. And you can even change the pen color. So now maybe, I don't know, uh, Matilda saw that, but then another child saw two and two and two makes six. So then you can write that out as well. So you can use different colors. You can um, use different colored sticky notes as well. And you can really show the math thinking of each student right there on the screen so that they're able to see it. That's what I really like about using um, Jamboard or a digital tool like this, that, that you're able to manipulate it and really showcase what it is. And let's say you want to just restart it and like you just go back and you can delete everything that the kids have said and start again. Um, you can do one of these slides, two of these slides. I wouldn't do too many of them. Um, for a number talk, you don't want it to take 
so long that, you know, the kids are disengaging from it. Just picking one or two slides to start off your math lessons at the beginning of the day to really get them talking about those math skills would be perfect. And again, um, I have the Jamboard version and the Google slide version of these Jamboards available. At, so it's like easy for you to prep. You don't have to do anything beforehand. You can just jump on and pick uh, a couple of slides just like I did there. But that was the Jamboard activity. What I'm going to do now is just switch over and show you what this looks like on a Google slide instead. And that's what you like to use for the Google slide version. I flipped it over to go to the math manipulative one, just to give you a little bit of idea of something else that you can do other than just using pictures. With this one as well on Google Slide, I did make it so that the text is editable in case you wanted to change what the questions are asked. With Jamboard, I feel like that's more of a student-led um, activity that they can do themselves and that they can, you know, manipulate much easier. And if I was using it as a, you know, as an ind more of like an independent practice where the students can input their answer, like. Um, themselves i would use a jamboard but if it was me as an educator you know directing the students and writing down their answers for them i might use google slides and i kept the um, questions open so that you can manipulate the questions and ask different questions if that's what you're looking for or if you are teaching in a different language you can change which language it's in because right now it's just in english but if you teach french you could change it to have um, a french question instead so on uh, a Google slide version, it's pretty much the same thing. Again, you would just could easily add a text box just saying like um, three plus two equals five because I don't know, um, Paul saw that that was how um, he saw them on the screen. And it would be really easy to just be able to um, be able to write in the different math thinking that they see. I would probably like maybe change the color or something so that it stood out. You could like put make it yellow in the background to really showcase um, the different student thinking. And then you could also use a circle again. I like Jamboard because it has the pen feature where you can just draw on the, the whiteboard. But in um, Google Slides, you could just use um, the circle tool and just make it transparent and just make um, the um, outline black and then you could just you know copy and paste it the number of times that you need it to circle the different math thinking that they had if you duplicate it you could show that three and two makes five and then you could change the color of the circles depending on the students just like we did with the Jamboard to show the different math thinking again manipulating the slide so that you can really showcase the different uh, math thinking of the different students because that's really what you want out of a math talk is for be students to be able to see how their peers are seeing numbers so that they're starting to be able to see numbers in different ways as well and it's really powerful when it comes from that peer-to-peer -peer interaction and sometimes these kids come up with answers that i would never even would have come up with as an answer so it's really great to be able to hear like the different math thinking that they have because as an educator sometimes i see it one way and they come up with a great way of seeing it and then their peers start to see it as well and it really gets them gets them thinking about their mental math skills and really showcasing it to other students so that there's that powerful, you know, peer to peer interaction can take place and they can really talk about how they see numbers. So those are just the two different ways that you can do a digital number talk slot, a digital number talk with your students, either, you know, projected on a screen in an in person classroom or uh, for online learning, you could, um, you know, share your screen with the slides on them. I really like it for um, you know, that engagement piece and getting students to really uh, start talking about what they, um, s how they see numbers and things like that. But again, if you want to know more about how I do a number talk in a kindergarten classroom, make sure you go check out that other video that I have because I go through all the different like hand signals that I use when kids are talking about number talks. That could also be really important when you're doing a digital activity, but I didn't want to make this video going too long when already that one is over there for you if you wanted to check that out. So uh, let me know in the comments down below is uh, do you do number talks with your students? Do you do them digitally? Have you ever tried to do them digitally? What works for you? What, what doesn't work for you? Let me know everything in the comments down below. I can't wait to hear from you. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel so that you know anytime I put out a new video, I try to make, you know, engaging content like this that's really, um, about kindergarten topics as well. So make sure you stay subscribed if you like uh, listening about different kindergarten topics and let me know, is there anything else you'd like to see um, from this YouTube channel? Any other things that you'd like to see how I would do digitally? Again, just leave me a comment down below and I will talk to you all next time. Bye.